what a beautiful joy and blessing to be able to be together with you all in this never alone summit. And we are never alone. There is a beautiful, beautiful line in the prayers that we chant every morning here on the banks of the sacred flowing Mother Ganga River in the lap of the sacred Himalayas. And the line that we chant in the prayers says, Tu akele nahi pyare, ram tere satme. It means you are never alone. God is always with you. God is always with us. And now we are with each other across all borders and boundaries of country, of continent, through these extraordinary technological feats of wires and communication, showing us what our spiritual teachings have told us for thousands of years, which is we are connected, we are one. Now we have the opportunity to really experience it. And I'm so, so touched and so joyful to be able to be with you here. This time of the COVID pandemic is an extraordinary tragedy, we know that. But on another level, it's also a great blessing. That blessing doesn't undermine the tragedy and suffering, but it makes us realize that we are living in multiple layers and levels of reality, of consciousness, of awareness, of experience. And on one level, there is horrific suffering. And on another level, there is a blessing. Mother Earth is healing like she's never healed before. Ganga is cleaner than people are saying they've seen her in so many decades. She's certainly cleaner than I've seen her in my almost 25 years here. Our air, our water, our soil is healing. And we are being given this extraordinary opportunity to go into our cave, the cave of our apartment, our house, our room, and then into the cave of our minds, of ourselves. So many of us have always said, oh, I don't have enough time to meditate. I don't have time to pray or to do yoga. Well, the universe has said, Stop, be still, go within, do the meditation, do the prayer, do the yoga. We've been forced into these inner caves. And of course it's not easy, but no one ever said spiritual practice was. Now, as we take care of our bodies by staying inside, by following the instructions of social distancing and hand washing, our bodies are safe, but our minds, stressed, anxious, fearful, and tragically no amount of hand washing can help. So what to do? Well, the sages and the saints and the rishis and the yogis who have been meditating in caves here in these beautiful mountains for thousands of years have given us some very beautiful tips and tools that I am so blessed to share with you today. And the first is create space. Most of us Identify very small. Think about a glass of water. Now imagine that that glass of water is you, or rather that glass of water is your self-identity, your perception. Now if I drop big rocks into that glass, what's gonna happen? The water is gonna splash out, it's gonna go all over the place. And what most of us do is we try to fight those rocks off. The rocks are the metaphoric stressors, whether it's a virus, whether it's a toppling economy, 
or whether it's the stress that we faced long before there was a virus named COVID. Stress that we faced throughout the years of our lives. Stress that tragically we have started to hear is normal. Oh, you're stressed? Yeah, yeah, that's normal. That's the tragedy. Stress shouldn't be normal. But as these metaphoric rocks, these stressors of the people in our lives not acting the way we want them to, the universe not behaving the way we think it should, as these stressors come into the glass that we identify as ourself, they create waves, they create tsunamis. We try to fight them off, fight off the rocks, get them to stop falling but that never works. And we spend our lives just pushing and pushing and pushing and trying to escape the stressors, trying to get the world to do what we want it to do. But instead of that, the sages have taught us, expand the self. If you take those same rocks and you drop them in a bathtub, you'll get barely a little ripple. Certainly not a tsunami over the edge. And if you drop them in the ocean, no one notices. So rather than trying to fight off the rocks, become the ocean, expand the self. The rocks will always be there. You stop thinking like the glass, become the ocean. Next, realize that you are the one in control of your mind, in control of your thoughts. Most of us have become like Pavlov's dogs, stimulus and response. Something happens in the outer world, a virus, a stock market going up and down, an economy going up and down, our own weight going up and down, people in our lives doing what we want, not doing what we want, behaving, not behaving. And we go up and down with it. And we think that our minds, our thoughts, have to be the direct consequence of what's happening in the world, but they don't. Our minds are our own choices. You are the screenwriter the director, the producer, the costume designer, the casting director, and the star of the drama of your own mind. You decide, what's today's drama gonna be? What script am I going to write? What drama am I going to star in? Is it going to be one of stress and fear and anxiety? or one of love and peace and spaciousness. That's up to you. Our thoughts are tickets. They're tickets onto vehicles. Think about it. If someone said to you, hey, guess what? I'll give you a first class ticket to hell. Would you go? Of course not. Because we know that no matter how cushy the ride, free entertainment, free drinks, free food. Still, at the end of the day, it ends up in a place we don't want to be. But every time a thought comes into our mind of stress, of anxiety, of anger, of jealousy, of competition, of all of this nonsense that afflicts us, of all of the histories, the stories that we tell ourselves, the smallness, the helplessness, the hopelessness that we tell ourselves, we jump right on. And then we end up in misery and we wonder how we got there. So next time that misery train comes by and it wants to give you a first class seat, tell it namaste, no. Thanks so much. No, I'm good where I am. Don't get on the train, the plane, the bus to misery. 
We have a beautiful teaching in our scriptures that says, Man eva munishyanam kadanam bandha mokshayo. And it, it reminds us the mind is the key to our freedom or our bondage. Most of us these days feel stuck at home. Oh, I want to be free. I wish I could go out. Wish I could go to the beach. Wish I could go here. Wish I could be free. But the bondage is not of the body. A closed door of your home is not the restrictor of freedom. It's in the mind. Regardless of whether you're in one room, two rooms, or a mansion, if in the mind there is love, peace, joy, spaciousness, you are free. And you could be paragliding over the mountains. And if in your mind there is misery and jealousy and not enoughness and competition and anger and unfulfilled expectations and stress, you are stuck. So think very carefully about the vehicles that you get on. Practice gratitude. Most of us think, first I'll get what I want, then I'll be grateful. But actually, it goes the other way. First, we are grateful. And then we get what we want the most deeply, which is what? It's not actually that couch or that plasma TV set. It's that through those things, I will be happy. It's happiness. It's joy, it's peace, it's meaning, it's fulfillment that actually we long for. Practice gratitude. It brings that to you. Lastly, give yourself a fast for all your senses. We fast for the body to maintain health in the body. But as you are maintaining health in the body, you need a fast for the rest of the senses. All of that news, all of that social media, all of those dashboards with numbers that are increasing constantly, everybody else's stress and anxiety, know when to turn it off. As we are so careful about what comes into our mouths as food, be very careful about what comes into you through your ears, through your eyes, because just as important as our physical immunity, is our emotional and spiritual immunity. And our physical immunity, we know how to take care of that. But our emotional and our spiritual immunity, that becomes robust when we are anchored. Anchored and connected and grounded in love, in peace, in joy. And that is the power that we have in every moment. Choose love, choose peace, choose joy. Yes, the virus is there, and tomorrow there will be something else, and the day after there will be something else. And in the face of it all, we have the power to choose love and choose joy and choose peace. Grab that power. So, so, so much love to you all in your homes, in your apartments, in your rooms, from these sacred and holy banks of the Mother Ganga River.